we're in the early stages of, of pre, but there's a very lengthy uh, uh, sort of R&D pre-visualization process that goes on for a movie like that because it's incredibly complicated. I mean, there's there's things in this that uh, no one's really done before, not not to this degree anyway. And and there's a lot of people sort of scratching their heads, you know, well, how are we going to do this? So so we're um, we're spending a lot of time pre-visualizing and 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 making sure that we all are very, very clear on how to do this. Um, and it's sort of the evolution of what the Henson team did back in the 80s, and now we've got all the computer technology. But it's, it's, a, it's about finding a balance, because we really want to honor the Henson tradition of puppetry and all that kind of stuff, and then combine it with the latest and greatest stuff as well. Yeah, you do, but I mean, you just focus on making the story as good as possible, and um, it's it's not a remake. It's a continuing story, so it is a whole nother chapter of the saga. Um, so I mean, and for me, that's far more interesting. I, I I'm not a big fan of doing remakes. I'd much rather tell another story, and that's what this is. Sure. I mean, it is. It's almost like. With these event fantasy movies, it's, it's almost like an obligation now, I guess, to do 3D. But um, you'll have the choice. If you don't want to watch 3D, go see it in 2D, you know. Um, but yes, it will be shot in 3D. Um, and it is becoming, the bridge between consumer and professional is sort of fading away. It's pretty much gone now. You can shoot a movie on a digital format that looks like a movie. Um, so it's amazing. It's a great time to be a young filmmaker learning how to make movies because you can get, like you say, a Canon a 7D and, and Final Cut in your laptop and you can make a movie. Um, doesn't mean it's going to be any good, but you can actually, you can make a movie. I know that when we were starting out, you know, we, um, our first movie was shot in Super 16mm, which is a pretty rough format to shoot on, but it was the most cinematic looking format we could afford at the time. I mean, on our first film we shot on wind-up bolexes, I don't know if you... <laughs> I mean, they're, they're the cameras that were essentially used in the war, <laughs> and you literally wind them up with a crank and, and run them, and, and um, you know, the, 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 the film would jam in the camera all the time, so, and, and literally it'd just spill out of the camera. So we would pull the film out and line it up on the ground, measure it, measure how many feet we'd lost, work that out into seconds or minutes, and then think back to how many takes that was and do it again. It's one of those things, but there's such a, a massive amount of films being made. You know, you, you think about the release schedule. Even now, for the rest of the year, there's, there's almost every single weekend, there's a major film being released. There might even be two major films being released. It really has pushed out the indie films in many respects because of the, there is so many films coming out. You know, you used to have these months that were called dump months. Um, you know, like, like our film came out in the US in January, and that was traditionally considered a dump month. But that, there's no such thing anymore because you know when we came out, it was you know, Denzel Washington's new movie was coming out, Peter Jackson's new movie was coming out, all around the same time. And there's there's no such thing as a month like a quiet month or a chance to release a smaller movie and have it do well because it's just chock a block all year round now. I think it's just harder to get theatrical releases. I, I don't think the indie films will go away in Australia because that's what we are. That's our industry. Um, I just think there will be less and less theatrical releases simply because people will only want to go to the cinemas for, the, for these events. Um, it's unfortunate, but it's just the way it is. And, it, and it's also because home video has become so good now, you know, like you can have an amazing experience at home. I mean, Daybreakers is in 7.1 on Blu-ray, which, um, you know, which we didn't have in, in the cinema. The sound is actually better on the Blu-ray disc than it was in the cinema.